post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, this green rug, it's completely out of place in this room. Everything else is blue. You're right, Patsy. It doesn't belong here at all. Good grief, at a time like this, you two have to worry about the interior decoration. Besides, there's no reason for a rug there. No, not unless... Not unless it was placed there to cover something. Oh, lift it up. Maybe you'll find somebody hiding under... Suffering wildcats. Nick, that's... That's blood. And now, the case of the star of evil. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's late in the afternoon as Nick and Patsy enter the luxurious Brentwood Arms Hotel in answer to a call from Irving Malcolm, president of Gigantic Films Incorporated. They step into the elevator, and Nick gives the number of Malcolm's floor. 16, please. Uh, Sorry, mister, this is a private elevator. Private? Yeah, for the Maharaja of Janiper and his suite. The Maharaja of Janiper? Yeah, they got the 14th and 15th floors all to themselves, so they rate their own elevator. Oh, (laughs) Class, huh? Is the Maharaja right, Jerry, there? How about another hot shot today, huh? Okay, Mr. Larson. Well, what uh, do you know? Speed Larson. Why, Nick, how are you? Hi, Speed. Hello, Patsy. The Dickens you do in here, Speed. Uh, hold on a second, I'll tell you. Right now, I've got a little business with the kid here. Okay, son, how about another hot shot today? Well, try Lady Bird in the 5th of Jamaica. I got it straight from the jockey. Okay, business is over. Yeah, but you were going to tell us what you're doing here. You mean you haven't heard? Why, I'm doing public relations for the Maharaja of Janapur. What? I thought the paper said he didn't want any publicity. Look, Patsy, how can you keep a guy like that off the front pages? He's young, single, romantic, and he's got more money than the mint. Uh, hey, did you see that two-page spread in the dispatch about his diamonds? Oh, I did. What, what's that big diamond called, the one in his turban? A star of evil. Mm. And you know how much that stone weighs? How much? Over a hundred carats. It's worth a quarter of a million bucks. A diamond of the first water. Well, why do they always call them diamonds of the first water? Maybe because a really clear diamond is completely invisible in pure water. Oh, I Hey, see. hey, here comes his nibs, the Maharaja. Oh, really? And does he always go around with a couple of Russian wolfhounds and a half dozen attendants in full costume? Sure, that's royalty for you. Oh. Hey, kids, snap to attention. Here comes his majesty. Okay, Mr. Larson. Nick, look. Look at that diamond in his turban. Oh, did you ever see anything like it in your life? Is that the famous star of evil, Speed? Yeah, uh, yeah. Look, look, kids, would you mind moving back a little? His nibs doesn't like people crowding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, Speed. We have to leave anyway. Remember, Betsy? We came here to find out what Mr. Malcolm has on his mind. It's my daughter, Carter. She's disappeared. She left the hotel at 10 o'clock this morning, and I haven't seen her since. Oh, but that's only six hours ago, Mr. Malcolm. There's nothing to be alarmed about yet, is there? You don't know Linda, Miss Bowen. She's only 17, and she's led a very sheltered life. Sheltered? Sounds a little odd for the daughter of a Hollywood producer. No daughter of mine is going to marry an actor. I know them too well. I see. But now about her disappearance. Well, I can't tell you much. Linda and I were going to have lunch together, but when I went to her room for her, she was gone. The desk clerk said she left the hotel at 10 this morning. Frankly, Mr. Malcolm, I think you're excited over nothing. I tell you I'm not. Something's happened to her. What? You mean she's met with an accident? Either that or she's been kidnapped. Well, let's not jump to conclusions. Perhaps it'd be a good idea if I took a look at Linda's room. What for? Find out what clothes she's wearing today. After all, when we send out the police alarm, we want to describe how she's dressed. Well, there's certainly plenty of dresses in this closet. Uh, Mr. Malcolm, can you tell what's missing? Oh, I'm afraid not, Carter. Here, wait a minute. Her leopard skin coat's gone. I know she had that with her. Did she bring all her things in these two bags? No, there should be one more, an overnight bag. And a jewel case, that's missing too. In other words, she left with a jewel case, an overnight bag, and a fur coat for which today's weather is entirely too warm. I don't understand. It almost looks as though she's run away, doesn't it? Yes, it almost does. Uh, Nick, come over here. Yeah, what is it, Patsy? 
This blotter on the writing desk, it's a new one, but it has some pretty plain ink marks on it. All right, hold it up to the mirror. Uh Uh-huh. Look, it's the end of a letter. I can make out until tomorrow. There's something else, and then darling... And the signature, Linda. That's impossible. Linda doesn't call anyone darling. And that part that's blurred just before darling, that could be a name. Yeah, it could. Starts with a capital R. Hmm. Could it be Robert? No. Loops go in the wrong direction. Mm. Looks more like Romney. Romney? Romney Lewis. So that's who it Hmm? is. And who's Romney Lewis? The star of my latest picture, and exactly the sort of man I've tried to keep Linda away from. Oh, I never heard of a movie star named Romney Lewis. This is his first picture, and believe me, it'll be his last. I picked him out of the gutter, and I'll kick him right back there. Now, hold on, Mr. Malcolm. We don't know that your daughter... I'll Malcolm... handle this myself, Mr. Carter, and I'll handle it my own way. Romney Lewis included. <laughs> Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. Is Mr. Carter there? Oh, just a moment. It's for you, Nick. Thanks. Nick Carter speaking. This is Mr. Pringle, manager of the Brentwood Arms Hotel. Can you come over right away? Why, yes, I guess so. You calling for Mr. Malcolm? No, I don't know anything about Mr. Malcolm, but there's been a robbery here on the 15th floor. The 15th floor? Yes. Isn't that the one occupied by the Maharaja of Janapur? Yes, that's why I want the hotel to have its own investigator on the case. The Maharaja's so much in the public eye, the publicity will be ruinous if we don't get it back. Get what back, Mr. Pringle? What's been stolen? That diamond of his. The star of evil. Fifteen, Jerry. Okay, Mr. Pringle. When did you find out the diamond was gone, Mr. Pringle? Mr. Larson told me about it at 7.30. I said I'd try to get you to handle it, Mr. Carter, and that we could keep the whole thing quiet. No publicity. Did Larson agree to that? No, no, he was most completely uncooperative. As a result, the place has been simply crowded with police officers and with reporters from every paper in town. Thank heaven they're gone now. Ah, here you are, Mr. Pringle. Fifteen. Right across the hall, Mr. Carter. That open door. Hiya, kids. Some story, oh, huh? Sure is, Speed. Yeah, ought to get your headlines all over the country. How'd it happen? Gang of masterminds. That's all it could have been. And you discovered the robbery, did you? Sure. Went down to the lobby for some cigars. Couldn't have been gone over 15 or 20 minutes. Right, Jerry? Oh, about 10, I'd say, Mr. Larson. And when I brought him back up, Mr. Carter, he knew what had happened before he even got out of the elevator. You knew the diamond had been stolen, Speed? I sure did. How could you tell that? Well, the door was open to this room, and I could see his nib's turban lying on the floor with the star of evil ripped right out of it, like it is now. Well, where was the Maharaja? I don't know. He was in the room when I left, but I guess he went out. Well, he wouldn't go anywhere without his turban, would he? Well, maybe he's prowling around incognito, like uh, like some old guy in the Arabian Nights. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Speed, nobody walks away and leaves a quarter-million-dollar diamond lying around without even closing the door. Ah, uh, you don't know his nibs. To him, a million is peanuts. Peanuts? Hey, What was in this case here? Huh? This big Morocco leather case, lying open here on the table. Oh, yeah, that was stolen too, I guess. Uh, Mohammed's Vengeance, he called it. It's a sword. A sword? Yeah, a big heavy thing like a cavalry saber. It's got a solid gold handle crusted with rubies and emeralds. Uh, Nick, you notice that little rug over there? Where, Patsy? Over against that door. This whole room is decorated in blue, so what's a green rug doing in here? What? Somebody must have moved it, Miss Bowen. That rug belongs in the bedroom. Good grief. Here we've got the biggest jewel robbery of the century, and you two have to worry about the interior decorations. You're right, Patsy. There's no reason for a rug there at all. Not unless... Not unless it was placed there to cover something. So now we're going to look under the rugs, huh? What do you expect to find? Somebody hiding there? (gasps) Suffering wildcats. Nick, that... that, That's blood on the floor, isn't it? Blood. Gee. Yes. And on the sill of this door, too. The rug was placed here to hide it. It looks as though part of the blood stain is on the other side of the door. Oh, it's locked. Where does this door lead to, Mr. Pringle? Why, it's, 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 it's just a closet. Have a key? No, but, but the housekeeper has one. Oh, I'll go get it, Mr. Pringle. All right, Jerry. And then hurry. Oh, you bet. Nick, are you thinking the same thing I am? Afraid I am, Patsy. I'm afraid that when we open that door, we'll find out why the Maharaja is no longer interested in the star of evil. Here, 
here's the key to that closet, Mr. Pringle. Uh, the one in the living room was gone, so I had to go down to the desk. Uh, thanks, Jerry. Here, Mr. Carter. Thanks. Good heavens. A dead body. Hey, if that's... Nick, that can't be the Maharaja. Look at his hands. They're as white as mine. And the Maharaja had a dark complexion. Uh, turn him over so we can see his face. Yeah. Good grief. This man a guest at the hotel, Mr. Pringle? Well, no, no. I, I never saw him before. I know who it is, Nick. Who? He's a movie actor named Romney Lewis. <laughs> Romney Lewis, who's supposed to be in Hollywood, is found dead in the New York hotel rooms of the mysterious Maharaja of Jhanipur. And Linda Malcolm, in love with Lewis, has disappeared. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the Star of Evil, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's been almost an hour since Nick found the body of Romney Lewis locked in a closet of the Maharaja of Jhanipur's hotel suite. Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Squad has arrived to take over. And uh, you say that when you opened the closet, Nick, this sword was in there as well as the body? That's right, Matty. Well, I guess there's no doubt that it's the murder weapon. Golly, yeah. Somebody must have used it like an axe. You keep out of this, Jerry. Yeah, okay, Mr. Pringle. You better go back to your elevator. And really, I should be down at the desk. So you gentlemen will excuse us. I think you better stick around, Mr. Pringle. Yeah, me too, Mr. Carter? Yes, you too, Jerry. Ah, oh, swell. Hey, I'll tell one of the other guys to take over my car, Mr. Pringle. Well, very well, Jerry, but come right back. Yes, sir. Okay, Speed. This isn't a publicity story any longer. It's murder. Open up and tell us the truth about the Maharaja. Nick, Nick, you've got to believe me. I, I didn't count on anything like this. Well, then, where is his highness? And why was this Romney Lewis in this room when he should have been 3,000 miles away in Hollywood? Did he know the Maharaja? Know him? He was the Maharaja. What? what? It was all a publicity gag. Lewis was the star of a movie called The Star of Evil. It's going to open here in a couple of weeks. Oh, fine. He plays an East Indian prince in it, so we thought we'd get a lot of publicity out of the fake robbery. Fake and then... robbery. You mean the diamond hasn't really been stolen? I, I, I don't know, Nick. We planned it for tomorrow, but when I came up here and saw the turban on the floor with the diamond gone, well, I thought somebody jumped the gun, so I went into my act. Speed, how much was that diamond really worth? Oh, a couple of hundred, maybe. Oh. Hey, Eddie's taking over the elevator for me, Mr. Pringle. Now, what can I do for you, Sarge? You can keep quiet till I call on you. Well, I was you. Now, look, Speed, when you went downstairs at 7.15, was Lewis alone here in the suite on this floor? Yeah, he was in his bedroom changing clothes for dinner. Not only changed, he took off the Indian makeup. Uh, where were all those East Indian servants? Well, their rooms are on the floor below this. They're really Hollywood extras, not servants, so they never come up here unless the reporters are in the place. Oh. Yeah, well, one of them could have made a sneak up the stairs, couldn't he? Yeah, look, Sonny boy, would you mind letting me ask the questions? Yeah, well, As a matter of fact, Sergeant, yeah. nothing like that could have happened. The stairway doors are locked. Mr. Larson's instructions. Yeah, but I... Jerry! Okay, okay. Then anyone who came to this floor while Speed was downstairs must have used the elevator. None of the cars stop at this floor except Jerry's. You didn't bring anyone up here, did you, Jerry? Well, no, there wasn't anybody came up in the elevator, hey. but... Uh... Nick, I found that letter. It was hidden under Lewis's handkerchief in his dresser drawer. What letter is that, Patsy? A letter to Romney Lewis from Linda Malcolm. I have an idea they were planning to elope. They were. The letter says she'll be waiting for him at the Alexander Hotel in Chicago. He was to take a plane and join her there so they could be married tomorrow. So Lewis was running off with the boss's daughter. Great jumping horn toads. Hey, I'll bet Malcolm was wild. Yeah, you're right about that. Steve. Ah, so that's why Mr. Malcolm made that disgraceful scene in the lobby. What's that? Well, what do you uh, mean, Mr. Bringle? As I was going on duty at the desk about 7 o'clock, there was a commotion over by the elevators, and I looked up just in time to see Mr. Malcolm grab the Maharaja... Mr. Lewis, that is, by the coat as if you were actually going to strike him. Did you hear what they said? No, but he was terribly angry. Anyone could see that. Yeah, I, I, I heard him, Sarge. He said, if you don't keep away from my daughter, I'll kill you. Well, I guess that solves this case, all right. Don't be so sure, Matty. What? Huh? How do you think Malcolm got here? Jerry says nobody came to this floor by elevator, and the stairway door was locked. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Mr. Malcolm stand on the floor above this, and that stairway door ain't locked. But it isn't. No, I noticed it when I was out in the hall a minute ago. Come on, Nick. We're going to call on Mr. Malcolm in a hurry. All right, suppose I did say I'd kill Lewis if he didn't stay away from my daughter. Naturally, I didn't mean it literally. Yeah, but 15 minutes after you said it, he was dead. Now, how do you explain that? I don't have to explain it. 
He promised not to see her again, so I didn't have any reason to murder him. Uh Uh-huh. How do we know Lewis promised? Did anyone hear him? No, but I can prove that he did. He told me where Linda is, at the Alexander Hotel in Chicago. I put through a long-distance call to her. I'm waiting for it to come through now. Lewis undoubtedly made you that promise, Mr. Malcolm, but I'm afraid he didn't intend to keep it. What do you mean? Take a look at this. Huh? What is it, Nick? Copy of a telegram Lewis phoned down to the desk at 7.15. Hey, let me see that. Linda Malcolm, Alexander Hotel, Chicago. Disregard any messages from your father. Disregard. Take plane to St. Louis, meet you there tomorrow, and go through with plan as scheduled. Romney. Boy, that dirty double-crossing... So that's why he got out of that Maharaja get-up. He was hopping a plane for St. Louis, eh? And when you found out about it, Malcolm, you knocked him off just like you said you would. That's a lie. I didn't even know he was dead until you told me. Matty, I want to ask a couple of questions. Go ahead, Nick. I, uh, I want to look around this room anyway. What do you expect to find? Another body hidden in the closet? Never mind the wisecracks. Mr. Malcolm, Lewis was murdered between 7.15 and 7.30. Only a few minutes after you threatened him in the lobby. Where were you at that time? Well, I came up here to my room for a while. Yeah? And then I went out for a walk. Afterwards, I came back and put through that long-distance call, yes. Can you prove that? If you mean, did anyone see me? No. Then I'm afraid you haven't much of an alibi. Uh Uh-huh. What is it, Matty? Nick, whoever killed Lewis had to have a master key to unlock that closet where he hid the body, didn't he? Sure, but we know he stole that from the linen room. Right. Mr. Malcolm, are you sure you didn't go down there and swipe that key when you came upstairs after threatening Lewis in the lobby? Of course I'm sure. And you didn't use that same key to unlock the stairway door so you could walk down one flight, knock off Lewis, and then get back to your own floor? I most certainly did not. All right, then. And why did you hide the key under the scarf on your dresser? What? You found the key, Matty? Sure I did. How could I miss it in a spot like that? I don't know anything about it. I never saw that key before. No? Well, you're going to see it again, Mr. Malcolm, and plenty. You're going to see it in court, because this key is the evidence that's going to convict you of murder. <laughs> Hey, uh, Nick, uh, why did Patsy stay up in Malcolm's suite after he was taken to headquarters, huh? Oh, he asked her to stay and take that long-distance call from his daughter when it comes to, Matty. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I guess so. Oh, you want me to ring for the elevator? Yeah. I want to find Pringle and ask him a few more questions. What for? This case is wound up. Think so? Why, sure. Malcolm's guilty. Every bit of evidence points to him. That's the trouble, Matty. Why would a smart guy like Malcolm leave so many clues? Well, it's... And why would he murder a man right after threatening him in front of witnesses? Because he was too mad to think about being smart. (laughs) Why, when he found out that Lewis was double-crossing him, Nick, I bet he blew his top. No, I don't think so. Huh? And if I find what I'm looking for, Matty, I'm afraid you're going to look pretty silly. What are you talking about? I'm talking about one piece of evidence the killer would have to get rid of. What? Something that would convict him beyond a shadow of a doubt. Oh, oh, you you mean the diamond. Hi, Mr. Carter. Sarge. Oh. Hey, that was a great piece of work you did catching that Malcolm guy so quick. Yeah, thanks, Sonny. Oh, Jerry, I'm looking for Mr. Pringle. Is he in the lobby? Yeah, I'll take you down there. Thanks. Hey, Nick, I don't know how you can think Malcolm is innocent after finding that key in his room. I'll tell you later, Matty. Okay, but if we find that diamond on him, too, you're the one that's going to look silly. Mr. Pringle, say you want to look in the incinerator. Well, this here is it. Thanks, Sam. Has there been a fire in here in the last few hours? No, no, sir, Mr. Carter. I was just getting ready to start one now. Oh, look, Nick, why do you think anybody would want to hide a diamond in the incinerator? I'm not worried about the diamond, Matty. Well, then what Sam, in the Nick? if I give you $5, will you crawl in that incinerator and try to find something for me? Yes, sir. What do you want me to look for? Suit of clothes, Sam. A blood-stained suit of clothes. Blood? Well, uh... I don't know about that. I'll make it $10. Well, okay. For $10, I don't mind blood. Wait till I open the door. Here. I'll help you get in. All right. Up you go. Hey, Nick, what's all this about a bloodstained suit of clothes? Well, if you recall, Matty, the murderer didn't stab with that sword. He chopped. Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw the body. And then he dragged Lewis inside that closet. Which means he's bound to have got blood on his clothes. Yeah. yeah, I guess he would at that. And he'd also want to get rid of that suit, but fast. And the easiest way to get rid of a suit, but fast, would be to throw it in the incinerator. Sure, and with the incinerator shaft opening onto every floor, he could throw it down here from any place. Is it this what you want, Mr. Carter? Uh, is it a bundle of clothes, Sam? 
Well, I found a bundle of something. I, I handed out the door to you, huh? Okay, now here you are. Mary, this is it. Look. For the love of Pete. Why, that must belong to... Let's not waste time talking. I'll have to grab him before he gets away. <laughs> This is Miss Bowen and Mr. Malcolm's suite. No word on that call to Chicago yet? Oh, I see. Well, thank you. Yes, yes, I'll wait here till it comes through. Oh, uh, oh I, uh, I didn't think anybody was here. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. Yeah, I'm waiting to take a phone call from Mr. Malcolm. Oh? Uh, hey, I, I heard Mr. Carter say they'd have to find that diamond before they'd really have the goods on Malcolm. And I got a swell idea. You decided you'd come up here and find it for them. Is that it? Sure. And you can help me. We'll turn this place uh, upside uh, uh, down. Oh, uh, no, Jerry. The police will search the place. We don't have any right to. Yeah, but look, if we find that diamond, we'll get credit for cracking the case. Maybe there'll be a reward. Uh, no, and... Jerry. Absolutely not. Well, okay, if you say so. <laughs> Whew. It's hot in here, isn't it? I think I'll open a window. Yeah, it is hot. Think I'll get a drink of water before I go back to the elevator. Ugh. Hmm. There's a beautiful view from this window. I didn't realize we were so high up. Hey, hey, Miss Bowen, look. What, what is it, Jerry? It's a diamond. I, I didn't even have to look for it. It was right here in this glass. What glass? Well, the one on the dresser here. It was half full of water. When I started to empty it so as I could get myself a drink, there was a diamond. But... But that's impossible. No, it ain't. Remember what Mr. Carter said this afternoon about a diamond being invisible in water? Well, Mr. Malcolm must have known about that, too. Are you trying to tell me Mr. Malcolm hid the diamond in that glass of water? Sure. The best place to hide anything is right out in the open, because nobody ever thinks to look there. Jerry, I had a drink of water from that glass not five minutes ago. Huh? And the diamond wasn't there then. But, uh, but it must have been. No. You just put it there. No. That's why you came to this room, to hide that diamond someplace where you thought the police would find it. No, no, you're wrong. Just as you hid that key here to plant suspicion on Mr. Malcolm. No, no, I didn't. You stole that diamond, Jerry. You killed Lewis. All right, so what if I did? You're... You're going to run and tell the cops, huh? Oh, Jerry. Jerry, keep away from me. You like the view from that window, don't do you? Don't come any closer. It's I'll... 16 stories down, Miss Bowen. And you're going to make that trip a fast... <laughs> Jerry, no! Patsy clings desperately to the window frame, but her strength is no match for Jerry's, and slowly he forces her backward through the open window. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the Star of Evil, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. In a suite at the Brentwood Arms Hotel, Patsy stands by an open window facing a killer who says, At 16 stories down, Miss Bowen, and you're going to make that trip the best way. Jerry, no! Hey, what Let her go, Jerry. I missed that time on purpose, but I won't miss again. But, Jerry... Uh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Mr. Carter, I, I, I was just... He was trying to kill me. No. He was pushing me out the window. Oh. He killed Romney Lewis. No, no we know, Patsy. Come on, you little... <laughs> From now on, the only windows you'll be looking out of are going to have bars on them. And so, Patsy, when we found that blood-stained uniform, the incinerator, Nick and I started to look for the elevator boy. And the indicator showed that his elevator was stopped at the 16th floor. That's why we figured he'd gone up to Malcolm's suite. Well, thank goodness you got there when you did. We got a complete confession from him at headquarters. Good. It seems that when he came back up in the elevator after taking Speed Larson downstairs, the door across the hall was open, and there was the turban with the diamond, and nobody in the room. Uh-huh. And I suppose Lewis came in and caught him stealing it, huh? Yeah. And Jerry got panicky and grabbed a sword off the table and slashed at him. Whoa. When he realized Lewis was dead, he remembered the quarrel in the lobby. And got the idea of framing Malcolm for the murder. That's why he stole the master key from the linen room. Yes. He locked Lewis's body in the closet, unlocked the stairway door, then planted the key in Malcolm's suite. Yeah, but what about the blood-stained uniform? That was his next move. Huh? He got to the bellboy's locker room without being seen, changed into another uniform, and threw the one he'd been wearing down the incinerator shaft. 
thinking it'd be burned up before anyone found it. Oh. Now, tell me, Nick, when did you begin to suspect Jerry? Almost from the beginning, Matty. Yeah, how come? Neither Speed nor any of the Hollywood extras acting as the Maharaja's servants would have any motive for stealing the diamond. They all knew it was a fake. And, and... Pringle was on duty at the desk when Lewis was killed. Right. So there wasn't anyone left but Jerry. That is, after I... He eliminated Malcolm. Yeah, you eliminated everybody but Jerry. And after his trial, Nick, I got a hunch the state is going to eliminate him. Nick Carter, Master Detective is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This Tuesday, April 6th, is Army Day. And we wish to take this opportunity to say, hats off to our army. Remember, a strong America is a peaceful America. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>